Well, it stretches one's imagination. I can certainly tell you that uh, I've never run across something like this. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 strangest unsolved mysteries. Should have been so routine. For this list, we're looking at the most bizarre occurrences that remain unexplained to date. If there's a weird mystery you're mystified about us leaving out, let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Circleville Letters in 1977, residents of Circleville, Ohio, began receiving threatening and harassing anonymous letters. We're not talking about a couple or hundreds, but thousands of letters. They all had the same block lettering, and they would target politicians and leaders, but also just plain folks who had nothing to do with the running of Circleville at all. The letters had very distinctive handwriting and contained accusations of embezzlement, affairs, and even murders. Ron Gillespie died under mysterious circumstances after receiving a phone call and announcing that he was going to confront the writer. Was Ron Gillespie's death an accident? Was he really drunk that night? And why had one bullet been fired from his handgun? His wife was nearly killed by a gun in a booby trap attached to a sign. It turned out that Paul Freshour, Ron's brother-in-law, bought the gun, and his handwriting was deemed to match the letters. You know, I can't blame the jury because the jury didn't hear all the evidence. But I was just, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was really in shock. Yet during his time in prison, people in town continued receiving them, even while Fresh Hour was in solitary confinement. If Fresh Hour was the writer, he wasn't working alone. We are writing this off as an unsolved mystery. Four decades later, the debate over the writer's identity continues. Number nine, Havana Syndrome. Doctors said that diplomats' brain matter had actually changed. What started out as a mysterious nuisance became a suspected instrument of attack. Since 2016, U.S. officials and military personnel have been experiencing strange symptoms. These include pain, ringing in the ears, as well as difficulty with cognitive processes. A source says starting last December, the U.S. officials were exposed to a sonic device, which experts suggest could produce sound waves below and above human hearing, which could cause these symptoms. Named for the location it was initially reported, the embassy in Havana, Cuba, Havana syndrome has since been reported at U.S. bases and embassies in various countries. While some of those suffering from it have existing head injuries that could explain the symptoms, not all of them do. The recording is just one of the many sounds taken in Cuba that led investigators to initially believe it was a sonic weapon. Proposed explanations have included a psychogenic illness, the sound of crickets, or even a microwave weapon. While the CIA has concluded that most cases were probably not caused by a foreign power, two dozen cases remain unexplained. Accidental or targeted, Havana syndrome is yet to be fully understood. Who or what caused it? A mystery. The United States government is still not sure who or what is responsible for those health attacks. Number eight, the Max Headroom hijackings. On November 22nd in 1987, the broadcast of two Chicago TV stations was interrupted. Both interruptions featured an unidentified man dressed as the British AI character Max Headroom. Quarters finally did. The masked man disparaged the local station he was interrupting, made several pop culture references, and got spanked by a fly swatter. The heavily distorted audio, rotating background, and masked man gave the hijackings an eerie, almost David Lynchian feel. My brother is wearing the other one. But it's dirty. The hijackers couldn't be identified, nor did they come forward after the statute of limitations on their crime expired. These broadcasts seem destined to remain as mystifying as their contents. Take some pretty significant uh, equipment, technical equipment, and some knowledge of uh, broadcast uh, frequencies, uh, microwave frequencies. Number seven, Salish Sea Feet. Since 2007, residents of Washington, USA, and British Columbia, Canada, have found some rather morbid jetsam washed up on their beaches. Detached human feet. Most of them were found still inside shoes. Now you also have to consider whether or not this could be 
a serial killer, somebody who right now is underneath the radar. But physical anthropologists caution that while the spate of discoveries was new and startling, public awareness could have prompted people to pay attention to stray running shoes. Foul play has been ruled out, as most of the identified victims were involved in accidents or took their own lives. It's been speculated that the feet detached as the bodies decayed, and that the air pockets and buoyant foam in sneakers floated them to the surface. Too many unanswered questions remain. Who do the feet belong to? Why are they always in running shoes? Could something truly insidious be at play in the region? But it still seems extremely odd that there have been so many, and all around the same area. There are still far more questions than answers. Are these cases connected? How did the people die? And how many more feet are out there still to be found? Number six, Roman jars in a Brazilian bay. The historical consensus is that the first European visitors to Brazil were Portuguese, who arrived in 1500 AD. However, it is possible that the Romans beat them to it. In 1976, several amphorae, or Roman jars, were uncovered from the bottom of Guanabara Bay off the coast of Rio de Janeiro. This caught the attention of archaeologist and treasure hunter Robert Marx, who explored the area further and claimed to have found up to 200 more amphorae. Experts dated fragments to around the 3rd century. However, the idea that Romans arrived before the Portuguese deeply upset many Brazilians, and the government banned underwater exploration. So the depths of this mystery remain unknown. Number 5. Gloria Ramirez's Death while suffering from cervical cancer, Gloria Ramirez was admitted to an emergency room in California in 1994. While treating her, the medical personnel noticed odd symptoms, including a greasy polish to her skin, a strange odor from her mouth, and oddly shaped particles in her blood. Then, several of the people in the room began passing out. Overall, 23 people were affected by these strange symptoms, and Ramirez passed away, with the initial diagnosis being from kidney failure. The most common suggestion for Ramirez's apparent toxicity was that she was taking dimethyl sulfoxide, a home pain treatment which, combined with several of the treatments, turned into an acidic substance. Another suggestion is exposure to methylamine, but no one knows for sure. Number 4. Trump Family Breakdown No, Trump with an O. In 2016, Mark and Jacoba Trump took their three adult children on an impromptu road trip hundreds of miles north, leaving their house unlocked. Mark seemed convinced that people were out to get them and forbade phones. Their son Mitchell brought one anyway, but it was later thrown out the car window. He left, not understanding his parents' paranoia. Later, the daughters left too, stealing a car before splitting up. One, Rihanna, was found in a catatonic state. Ultimately, all returned safely, but no explanation has been given specifically for what happened. Whether it was shared psychosis or someone was out to get the Trumps, the case has fascinated the world ever since. Well, I thought at first that Trump had gone missing. <laughs> I, I, a lot of I saw like that when Trump's gone missing. I went, yeah. well, there you go. No. Speaking of delusion. Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> Number three, Oakville Blobs. In 1994, Oakville, Washington experienced perhaps the strangest weather phenomenon of the last few decades. It rained blobs. Strange goo fell from the sky over a period of several weeks, blanketing the town in ooze. And it made people sick. I got sick, my wife got sick, my daughter. What's even more bizarre is that the residents experienced a widespread illness that lasted for several weeks too. So what could this goo have been? Someone uh, theorized that since the Navy had been conducting live bombing runs at sea, they might have blown up a school of jellyfish. And of course, this jellyfish would have been thrown up into the air um, and floated 50 miles inland. And over a period of three weeks, fallen six times. Was it evaporated bits of jellyfish that reformed in a cloud? Or maybe waste from an airplane? The most troubling theory is that the event was a military experiment on U.S. soil. Translation, germ warfare. There are a whole mess of theories about this messy and weird weather. Number two, the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. Families waiting for MH370. They still wait and really, they don't know much more than they did that first awful morning. 
On March 8, 2014, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 vanished while flying from Malaysia to China. After a loss of communications and its disappearance from civilian radar, Flight 370 reappeared on military radar, having deviated from its planned flight path. Approaching the point at which Malaysian air traffic control will hand over to Vietnam. Then, Captain Zahari makes a last routine, but now infamous, radio transmission. Good night. Good night, Malaysia. Uh, the disappearance has fascinated the public for years and led to several expensive searches. It seemed impossible for an entire airplane to just go missing in an age where everything can be seen by satellites. Although a few pieces have washed ashore, the bulk of the aircraft and the reason for its deviation remain unclear. What happened to the flight has haunted the world ever since. We're not used to planes just disappearing. If they come down, we expect to be able to find out why. Speculations have run the gamut from a hijacking to being shot down to some kind of equipment failure. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Dyatlov Pass Incident in 1959, nine Russian hikers were found dead in the Ural Mountains. All were severely injured, several were undressed, and they had cut their way out of their tent from the inside. Some were burned, and others slightly radioactive. Most seem to have died of hypothermia or their injuries. The case has baffled the public and authorities for over half a century. Theories include an avalanche, an animal attack, or military involvement. This is the last photo taken by the hikers before they died. It's out of focus, but it seems to show mysterious lights in the sky. The most plausible theory involves the group camping against a heavy snowbank, which collapsed, leading them to assume an avalanche and freezing after they escaped the tent. But unless there really was outside involvement, only the victims know the truth. The evidence here is both extensive, yet maddeningly incomplete. And until we fill in the gaps, the case cannot be fully closed. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.